Well, today I've got this Samsung Plasma. I'm going to do voltages and troubleshooting. This one is a model PN51D550C1FXZA. The power supply is part number BN44-00444. Four 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 A. That part number can be found on the barcode sticker on the power supply itself. The logic main board on this one, part number BN ninety six dash one six five two zero A. The only numbers that you can find on this board, unfortunately, are on this little barcode sticker right here, and you want to look for this number right here, seven fifty three A. Uh, that's the Samsung LJ number, and that is the LJ92-01753A, and then from that number, it can be crossed to other original Samsung part numbers. The main board, part number BN94-04354A, A. That number can be found on the barcode sticker on the main board as well. The X main board in this one, part number BN96-16523A. And the LJ number on this board is LJ92-01767. The only number you can tell is on this little barcode sticker right here, 763A. The Y main part number is BN96 16524A. The LJ number is LJ92 01764A. And the part number 764A can be seen on this little barcode right here. The Y buffer board on this model is part number BN96 16526A. The part number 769A can be found on the barcode sticker on the Y buffer board. So I want to start by doing just a couple of simple ohmmeter checks to make a determination on whether the Y buffer board could potentially be at fault. Uh, most cases, if your Y buffer board is at fault, uh, sometimes you'll notice one of the drive chips. Now these have little heat sinks on them so you can't actually see the tops of the drive chips. Uh, a lot of sets do not. If I move my camera over to the other drive chips, you can see that they do not have heat sinks on them. Sometimes you can look directly at the top of the drive chip and you'll actually see little bubbles where the chip has blown. So one of the tests that you can do to determine, and this has been fairly reliable for me, uh, if your set has these test points right here that are labeled service out high, service out low, you can take your ohm meter and you can just do an ohm meter check between these two test points and you should see virtually infinity as you can see on my meter it's up it's auto ranging so it's changing into the uh, millions of ohms right now as things charge and discharge uh, if your set does not have these test points on it you can look at this one main connector that has uh, these first two pins are tied commonly together to one set of pads all the rest of the pins on even these other connectors that you can't see that are off camera are all commonly most of them are commonly tied together and you can do the same ohm meter check if you can see it between my fingers there you can see that it's it's up in the high uh, thousands of ohms range 5800 5.8K. We'll try it the other direction. Reverse your leads and see what you get. Once again, it's up in the very high. It's charging a capacitor, obviously. So what you want to see is a very high resistance reading. And if I take uh, and look from these test points, you'll find that one's commonly tied. This one's tied to that one. So they're actually just connected to those two pins. Some of the earlier models did not have those test points on the board. But that's a good indication to tell if you're having a problem on your Y buffer board. 
Like I said, usually if you have a short on the Y buffer board, you've most likely got a damaged uh, Y main or Y sustain board at the same time because these boards pretty much run at their extreme all the time the set's on. And so any increased load causes damage to the board. So we'll start by looking for our standby power supply voltage. This is on the connector on the power supply, CN801. We're interested in pin 2. And we want to see about 5 volts there. I see 5.2 volts, so that's very good. That's our standby power supply voltage. Uh, pin 1 on this connector is power supply on. And on this particular power supply, when that voltage goes low, it turns on the power supply. So let me turn the set on right now, and you can watch that voltage. There it's down to 0.18 volts when the set is on. Let's look at the other voltages while the set is actually on and running right now. Uh, pin 4 should have 15 volts on it. Let me try to get to a better angle and I'm blocking it. So there is pin 4, 15 volts. Pin 5 and pin 6 are both ground. Pin 7 is the 5 volt run supply, as well as pin 8, 5 volt run. Pin 9 is ground. Pin 10 and pin 11 should have 15 volts on them. And then pin 12 is the 5 volt power supply once again. Now while we've got it here, I'll look at this power supply connector as well, CN802. It's almost off the frame. But we'll start with pin 1, which is the 5.3 volt power supply. Pin 2, same thing. It's labeled 5.3, but I'm only seeing about 5.2. That's within tolerance. You normally want to see it to be plus or minus about 5% is pretty acceptable. Anything more than that, and that could spell problems. Pin 3 is ground. Pin 4 is the VS control line. Pin 5 is the power supply online which is low on this model. Pin 6 is the VS control line which is high on this model. So power supply has to go down to zero volts to turn the power supply on and then to generate VA and VS this line has to go high. And we'll take a quick look. Let me back the camera off and show you where the VA and VS test points are. Here's the VS test point. 207 volts. Now that does vary according to this potentiometer right here. The VA test point, normally that's somewhere around 60 volts, 58. Um, kind of hard to see, but there's another VA adjust potentiometer here, and you go by the label that's on the plasma panel, it shows you what the voltages should be. So let's take a look at some of the voltages uh, on the main board now. Now this is CN201, this is on the main board, and this connector connects the keypad and a remote control sensor to the main board. So we'll start with pin number one, which is over here on this side. This is the remote control receiver. And we talked about this on the other videos. Oh, by the way, my negative lead is referenced to cold ground chassis ground. So I have it connected to one of the jacks with my little clip lead, just on the outside of the jack. So we'll look at pin one, 3.2 volts. And as I press any button on the remote, I should see that voltage dance around a little bit. Pin 2 is ground. Pin 3 is the 3.3 volt power supply to the remote control receiver as well as to the key scan processor. Now pin 4 is a clock line because this key scan is a touchpad so it has a data line that connects it to the main board and it's constantly talking to the main board via clock and data. This is the data line to the key controller. And then pin number six is actually the key data. This one's kind of hard to see, but if I touch one of the touch pads, you can see the voltage flicker just for a split second. It just barely changes. It's very hard to see. And so let's look at pin seven. Pin 7 is the LED on the front of the TV. So as I press the remote control, you'll see that kind of flicker on and off. 
as well as if I turn the TV off, that LED comes on. When I turn the TV back on, the LED will begin to blink. And you can actually see that blinking on your meter. I just wanted to talk very briefly about the Logic board. The Logic Main is what they call it in a Samsung. And I wanted to talk about this little LED that's on here. As I turn the set on, that's called the Heartbeat LED. And it should always be blinking quickly like this. That's a good heartbeat. If it's a slow blink, it means it has a drive problem. It may have a bad Y sustain board. It may have a bad Y main board. So what I've done on this one now is I've disconnected the power supply to the X and the Y main boards. And so I want to look at that heartbeat LED again. And you can see now it's blinking very slowly, which indicates that the set is having a problem with one of the scan boards, either the X main or the Y main. So you could have a short on the X main, the Y main, or you could have a power supply problem causing this. So at this point, make sure you check your VA, your VS to make sure they are there. If they come up briefly and go down, most likely it indicates you have a short on either the X or the Y main boards. Now on this particular model, and a lot of the later Samsung models, they do have a self-test mode. Uh, from the logic board. So even if you have a defective main board completely, you can disconnect the main board from the TV and you can force the logic board to turn the set on and display test patterns to test your Y and your Z boards. So the first thing is to remove this one connector. Now this is the connector from the power supply and as we talked earlier, pin 1 is labeled power supply on. Pin 1 is the lead that is gray as in respect to the other black leads. And it's a matter of jumping pin 1 to pin 3. So just add a little jumper in there like so. The next thing is to locate the test points on the logic main board. There's always four, or mostly four on most boards. And they're labeled 1, 2, 3, 4. It's always pin 3 and pin 4 on these uh, U.S. sets, American sets. Just get a little jumper. This is like from a uh, hard drive. A slave master jumper put that on there with your power supply pin jumpered as we did in the last step you can go ahead and just plug the set in the set should turn on I've even got the LVDS cable completely disconnected so the main board is not connected to the logic board or the power supply in any way at this point so I turn the set on I see that the LED is blinking so let me take the camera around to the front of the TV now. And as you can see out front now, I've got a red screen. It should cycle through various test patterns to let you know that the set is working normally. Okay, so now to access the service menu in this model, with the TV off, Using the original Samsung remote control, press the buttons mute, one, eight, two, and the power button. The set should power up and then enter into the service mode. There we go. Um, there are now. They seem to change these every couple of years, so you kind of kind of look around to see what is actually in here. There are some uh, different options that you can get into, some test patterns. There we go, test patterns. So you can actually step through these. If you're having a video problem, you can uh, step through the test patterns yourself and bring up all these different little uh, test patterns to try to isolate what the problem potentially could be. Uh, this one actually just had a new main board replaced in it, so it shows panel display time is zero hours. And uh, let's talk about uh, doing a factory reset. If you want to reset this back to factory status, uh, it's just on the first uh, option. Just select option, select factory reset. Press the OK button. The set will shut down. The next time you power the TV on, it should act just like it was taken out of the box. It should ask you to do the setup adjustments, 
just as if it were a brand new TV. So anytime you're having a, an odd problem, I recommend that you go into this and do a factory reset, remove the power to clear the RAM and the TV, power it back up. So once again, I hope you enjoyed uh, this video, the voltages and troubleshooting on this Samsung PN51D550C1FXZA. I appreciate all your views and supports, all your comments, all your questions. Like I said, I can't answer everyone, but I try to do my best. You can follow me on Twitter, NorCal715. Everybody have a great day. With your help, we can keep these TVs out of the recycle bin and out of the landfill. Thank you. Bye-bye.